I'm Dan O'Neill, a biologist and filmmaker, and I'm on a mission to find out what it takes to save an endangered species. <laughs> Join me on an expedition to the mountains of Kyrgyzstan as I learn firsthand how this country has brought snow leopards back from the brink. This is tough work. Look how clean that is. We start our mission in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan's capital where I hope to meet some of the people who've been dedicating their lives to saving an animal that's almost invisible. It's like a ghost of the mountains. I think it's a phantom who's there, but you never see it. After the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the economy in Kyrgyzstan collapsed, with rural areas being particularly hard hit. Snow leopards, which only live in these remote Asian mountains, had a price on their heads. Their skin and bones were traded on the black market, and numbers fell dramatically by as much as 80%. And despite global efforts, the black market for exotic pets, trophy hunting, skins and organs is ominous. They're losing their habitats to farming, urbanization and climate change. But here in Kyrgyzstan, the snow leopards are back. And this isolated country now has the highest density of snow leopards anywhere in the world. And I'm intrigued to find out why they're doing so well. Dr. Kustub Sharma has brought me just 25 minutes outside of the capital, to the foothills of the huge Tian Shan mountain range. What's special about this place that you've taken us? Not so long ago, we were able to detect a uh, good population, a healthy population of snow leopards in these mountains. Uh, people have always known there are snow leopards here, but uh, it was an only three years ago that we started to, uh, for the first time, photograph them using camera traps. That's what makes these mountains special. These snow leopards, they oversee the city of Bishkek, and Bishkek lives in the shadow of the snow leopards that inhabit these mountains here. So why do we use the camera traps? We basically don't know how many snow leopards there are, right? And the camera traps are our eyes in the mountains which help us count how many snow leopards there are. And they don't complain when they're out in the mountains. If I go and sit there for 20 minutes, I'll start complaining. But these camera traps stay there for six months without complaining and they, they record very valuable information. What will we be doing to help you guys? You'll be helping set out anywhere between 35 to 40 cameras in an entire um, seven, 800 uh, square kilometer landscape. What we hope to do is once that data comes back, we will be able to individually identify um, different snow leopards and put that data into sophisticated algorithms uh, to estimate how many snow leopards are there in that landscape. Gathering data on snow leopards in the wild is one thing. But Kustub wants to show me the harsh reality of what happens in this region when snow leopards come into direct conflict with humans. We are currently on our way to meet a woman called Seltanat who uh, runs a rescue and rehabilitation centre for injured animals here in the capital city. Uh, and she has a very special individual that's been rescued from a, quite a traumatic experience that we're going to meet today. Hi. My name is Sultana. Nice to meet you, Sultana. I'm Dan. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Oh, hello. Look at this guy. You are very sweet, aren't you? <laughs> oh, wow. He doesn't see. Mm -hmm. Stunning. Could you tell me his story? His uh, story uh, in January came uh, information uh, that в Таласе, недалеко от города Талас, был обнаружен снежный барс на дереве. И когда прислали видео, то есть там сразу я видела, что животное было дезориентировано. То есть на тот момент я не предполагала, что в него стреляли. Я думала, ну, может быть, был сильный удар по голове, или он ну, ходится и не знает, куда идти, то есть она вот так вот просто крутилась. А, и потом, когда его на следующий день привезли в ветеринарную клинику, я 
присутствовала на операции, и тогда уже выяснилось, что в него стреляли, что это были дроби. И после, когда мы уже пригласили специалистов-офтальмологов, тогда было уже ему не поможет. Он останется слепым навсегда. Probably kept illegally as a cop, mm. maybe found, picked up, and then one day escaped. Mm. Well, the fact that he was potentially an escaped cop meant that he wasn't afraid of people. Mm. And he came really close to someone who had a gun, and they were surprised, and they shot him in the face. It was the most painful image I've ever seen. There must have been nothing less than a hundred pellets in its head. The pain that this nolopet must be going through and the agony that it must be going through, it still sends shivers through your spine. Of course, it's, it's a classic case of exotic pet trade or uh, the illegal demand for snow leopards and other wild animals as exotic pets. And that's disturbing, mm -hmm. truly disturbing. And it's, but if it was a wild snow leopard which came into a community and someone got spooked and injured the cat, even then that issue needs to be addressed through education and working with the local communities. Whether this was a wild snow leopard trying to hunt where people now farm, or an escaped captive bred animal for the pet trade, this cat story is stark evidence of the challenge they're facing and the need to work with the communities who share their lands with snow leopards. Outside of the capital, the Kyrgyz people are spread across towns and villages in thousands of square miles of remote mountain ranges. Where do you even start? I'm going to the top and managed to arrange a meeting with one of the governors in charge of snow leopard conservation. Why are snow leopards so special? Ну, это для кыргызов это испокон веков считался это особый вид, и мы как бы когда разрабатывали программу, видели его на самом верхушке пирамиды. То есть пирамида это сохранение нашего биоразнообразия. Это как бы мы сами знаем, вы сами знаете, что Кыргызстан это горная сторона и э, э, смелекопитающий, который обитает на самом э, высоком месте, это является барс. He tells me they work with local people who revere the snow leopard to understand what happens when people and snow leopards share an environment. They found, for example, that when snow leopards have come into villages, they're often old or unable to hunt in the hills, so education and understanding snow leopard behavior is vital. Nationally, he tells me that ecotourism is a big hope for their economic growth. The fines for poaching have increased by 20 times, and they plan to increase the range of their national parks by around 40%. I listened as the governor explained that the Bishkek Declaration was signed by the 12 countries where snow leopards live, and sets out their joint aims to protect them and their habitats. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's really nice to meet you. Hearing the governor talk about how they're working both locally and globally to protect their snow leopards is so reassuring, and it's clearly working. But policies alone don't save species. I need to see what this means on the ground. Next time, I meet the man in charge of the Snow Leopard Foundation in Kyrgyzstan, and we prepare for an expedition into the remote Sarichat Reserve to gather vital camera trap footage.